Marbio Chow has joined the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, Riley, how are Richmond going to fare out of this trade period and losing a couple of key forward and key position players? Yeah, it's interesting. So Marbio Chow off to Gold Coast as an unrestricted free agent. They'll lose Callum Coleman-Jones to North Melbourne as well. I think key position depth will be on their radar. Um, obviously, they'll bring in Robbie Tarrant from North Melbourne. I still think they'll, they'd will they like one more key position forward. There's a couple of good ones in this year's draft. Um, so they've currently got pick seven. We've reported a number of times on afl.com.au mm. they're looking to move up. They actually went to Adelaide early this week and offered a couple of their early picks. They got four picks inside the top 28. They offered a couple of them to Adelaide for pick four and said, look, this could almost help you with the Jordan Dawson situation as well. Right. If, you, if you get one pick in, you can keep a first and potentially – offload another for Jordan Dawson. The Crows said no to that. They're, they're determined to stay at pick number four, but they are looking to get as high as possible. Uh, I think they'll go to GWS and see if they can get pick two. They'll go to Gold Coast and see if they can get pick three. So it's just one to watch there, I reckon. Righto, questions coming through. Now, we don't know um, the AFL's uh, compo. We've already spoken to Cow Toomey about that this morning, but a uh, few people wondering whether the Chol compensation will be end of second round or a third round pick, or could it even slide out further? He's a hard one for the AFL to value, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think it's one that'll slide out further. So I think, I mean, Richmond's probably looking at a best case scenario of that being in the third round. Um, and and of course, as we spoke about yesterday, Kane, this is why they'll they'll do a trade for for Taran Thomas, uh, for sorry, sorry for Robbie Tarrant as opposed to a uh, getting him in as a free agent because um, that'll dilute that compensation further if they bring in a free agent on top of it on top of losing Charles. So yeah, I reckon it'll be a, a third rounder at best for Richmond. Mm. Righto, Riley. What's your thoughts on a straight swap between uh, Braden Sire and Charlie Constable? Similar height, age, weight. Uh, both taken early 30s in the draft and um, both have some obvious talent and regularly dominate in the VFL but can't quite crack it at AFL level. Sire and Constable are a couple of players probably looking for more midfield opportunities at their respective clubs or, or somewhere else, Riley? Yeah, I don't see a straight swap being viable no. for either side just given the fact that they're very similar players. So if, for example, if Charlie Constable's struggling to crack... Geelong side, then Braden Sire would as well. And it's a similar situation for, for, for Constable at, at Collingwood. If, if Sire can't make that team, I doubt Constable can. So you can't see that one happening. They're, they're two ones to watch, though. It's been a little bit of interest in Charlie Constable, but Geelong would be happy to retain him for 2022. As for Braden Sire, I think his future's up in the air. It's, it's not a great time to be an inside midfielder, is it? I mean, mm. they were all a rage four or five years ago, and now it's very hard for them to find a home. Yeah, well, this is the problem because you got you got centre half forwards who can uh, have who can run. I don't know, like Craig Bradley playing inside midfield. Like, so we're, we're comparing these midfielders to well, he, well, he can't do what Petrarca has done. You look at yeah. look at Dunstan; he doesn't have the speed of of Clayton Oliver and the explosiveness. I mean, we've been sport with. I think it's been the best era for powerful inside midfielders. Uh, and that, if I had a Picking the draft early, I'd be putting all my thought into getting the biggest, most powerful midfielder that you possibly can, and that's where you know Horn Francis probably ends up there with his speed mm. and explosiveness. But there's a number of you know midfielders on the edge that you know are good ball winners and tough and courageous, but probably don't have the damaging attributes that Fife and Dangerfield and and Martin and and these types Bonson Pelly have had, which is which has probably hurt them a little bit. What are some of the other stories you, you're going to follow closely today? We can finally see some other action. Jake Kelly will probably join um, the Bombers, you would think, today. Yep. And the other one as well, there's another free agent. that George I'm, Hewitt. George Hewitt is the other one to join the Blues. Yes. Yeah, they're the two that we're watching for. No paperwork coming through to AFL House on them just yet, but I'd expect that to be done by close of business today. Jake Kelly's an unrestricted free agent, so he'll go straight to the Bombers. George Hewitt's a bit more complicated. Sydney does have the ability to match because he's restricted, but no one's really expecting the Swans to match that bid. Just another one to look out for, as reported on afl.com.au last night. Lewis Young from the Western Bulldogs. He's mm. started his career as a forward. He's played back as well. He had a, a large stint through the ruck when Steph Martin was out this year. He's meeting with rival clubs over the next couple of days just exploring his options as to uh, where his future could potentially lie. There's been a bit of talk that Carlton might be keen. The Blues are keen on uh, key position depth, on versatile key position depth. He can play at either end, so Lewis Young certainly fits the bill. It's why they've been linked to, to Jared Brander pretty heavily as well. So just want to keep an eye on there as well. Blues linked to a few. Um, they, they seem to be the linkage between a number of players. Uh, I, I did hear Tom Harley speaking. It might have been on, on Sports Day on 3 w so I hope I got that correct. 
really talking tough about Jordan Dawson, and and that's not uncommon. I, I think he's got a nice nature about him, Tom Harley, where he speaks tough without, you know, without taking it over the top. But they rate him highly, and he said we rate him um, to the point where the contract that we offered him, without going into details, was significant. So Riley here at your Adelaide. I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, they've given him five years at between six and 700000 I reckon, for Jordan Dawson to join the Crows. He'll be in their top three or four highest paid players at the club, yet they're looking to probably only give up pick 23. Should the contract that the player receives be factored into the compensation that needs to go to the club that he's leaving, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Uh, this one strikes me as being very similar to Adam Saad's move to Carlton last year. So Saad was uncontracted, getting a long-term contract at Carlton on about the same money as what Jordan Dawson will get Mm. at Adelaide. Now, the Blues gave up pick eight and then a later pick as well on top of that to get Adam Saad. So you can see why Sydney, given Mm. Jordan Dawson's just finished top three in their best and fairest, as Adam Saad had at Essendon, in 2020. He's a bit younger too, isn't he? Yeah. So you can see why Sydney would be saying, look, compare the pair. This is why we want an early pick. The Crows unwilling to give up pick four, which you can probably think is reasonable as well. It's going to be a really difficult one uh, to work through. And I know there's a lot of people in the industry that are going to be watching this one closely just to see how it pans out because a lot of people think this is the trade that could be going right down to the wire and when things are scrambling and it's 7.59pm on Wednesday, October 13 and nothing's sorted yet, this could be the one that they're trying to rush through in the arc to get it done at the very last minute. I reckon this is one that could uh, drag out throughout the entire trajectory. I reckon too. Yeah, I I think I can see that too. And and you do have Port Adelaide lurking. Like, if I was Port Adelaide, I'd I'd give pick 16 today for, for Jordan Dawson and probably something, probably something else, another third round or a pick at the end of it. Um... So there's that there. Is, I mean, that's un, unlikely to happen. Once you nominate your club, you usually get there. But the fact that he's, you know, at least uh, inquired with Port Adelaide and toured the facilities, you do have them there sitting as well, which may make Adelaide just a touch nervous. Uh, can you please ask Riley what the chances of Sean Attlee getting a new contract at North is? I think he'd get a short-term deal. Uh, We reported earlier this week that he's been told to wait until after the trade period just to see what his chances are. He's someone that's offered North a decade of of good football. Um, Mm. Probably had his most disappointing year this year. was dropped from the side late in the season. That's because they've got a a, a great amount of young talent coming through the ranks North. But I, I can't imagine a situation where he's playing elsewhere in 2022. I'd think he'd get a short-term deal at North at the very worst. 